Hello everyone, today we are joined by Samson Lakat, a PhD student in the Songling lab at Kandai University. He received his bachelor's degree from Miami University under the supervision of Professor Wei Liu, developing methods for couple catalyzed dichloromethylation. His PhD work has been focused on inactive selective and set selective aminoxyl peptide catalysis. Today, he is going to give a talk on a recent publication from their group, which is a catalyst controlled radio divergent oxidation of unsymmetric diodes. With that, I will turn it over to Samson. Thank you for the introduction and for the invitation to share my work on site selective alcohol oxidation. Although anyone that has taken an undergraduate organic chemistry class has actually received a pretty good overview of alcohol oxidation, I would still like to take you back through some historical examples of site selective alcohol oxidation in order to give more context to my work. Over the last century, there has been much work developing mild reagents to enable alcohol oxidation in complex settings. But if we focus in on site selectivity between two or more hydroxyl groups in the same molecule, I think we can categorize existing work into four classes of reactions. First, selective oxidation of primary alcohols over secondary alcohols, which is actually quite straightforward, and most common oxidants can achieve good selectivity for this transformation, since the primary site is much more sterically accessible. Still, I've listed here a few conditions which are especially well suited for this transformation. Achieving selectivity for secondary alcohols is less intuitive, but can also be readily accomplished by leveraging differences in the stability of reactive intermediates. For example, in a Stevens oxidation, the alcohol hypochlorite intermediate is less stable when derived from a secondary alcohol than from a primary alcohol, leading to a greater reactivity at the secondary site. On the other hand, for mechanisms proceeding through hydride transfer, the resulting carbocation intermediate is more favorably stabilized at the secondary site. Similarly, allylic or benzylic alcohols can be oxidized in the presence of unactivated alcohols by pathways which generate radical or cationic intermediates which are stabilized by the pi systems. And finally, alcohols with the same degree of substitution, so in this example two primary alcohols, can be sterically distinguished to achieve some degree of selectivity for the oxidation of the more accessible, less hindered site. But what about the more hindered alcohol? To the best of our knowledge, there is no example for the direct oxidation of the more hindered site in the absence of electronic bias. The only approach to formally achieve this transformation, here in the context of lactone synthesis, would be an initial protection with a degree of selectivity determined by the steric accessibility of the less hindered alcohol. Then, upon oxidation of the remaining alcohol, deprotection, and further oxidation of the resulting lactol, the corresponding more hindered lactone can be accessed over several steps. We thought that maybe we could tackle this challenging oxidation of the more hindered site using aminoxyl peptide catalysts that we had previously developed for the desymmetrization of mesodiols to chiralactones together with the Sigmund and Miller groups. In this work, led by Soren Rosema and Jonas Rhein, we had developed a new aminoxyl radical with an ester handle, ASCME, that could be linked to modular chiral peptides, which we optimized by an iterative high throughput screening against a panel of substrates until we identified an optimal peptide. P7, which provided high enantioselectivity over a broad range of substrates. We used a variety of techniques to study the mechanism of the system, but I would like to specifically draw your attention to a competition study between a structurally similar monoal and diol, in which we observed a linear correlation between the enantioselectivity of a catalyst and its selectivity for diol over monoal, with our best catalyst exhibiting up to a 26-fold preference for diol oxidation. Taken together, these results suggest a mechanism in which one of the hydroxyl groups covalently adds to the reactive oxo ammonium unit, and the remaining spectator alcohol engages in non-covalent hydrogen bonding to the peptide backbone, with one of the two possible diastereomeric adducts leading to the major product enantiomer. So then, the question is, can we use this strong two-point binding interaction to overcome steric bias and achieve site selectivity? In order to ensure that our method would work well with a wide variety of substrates, we first prepared a set of screening dials for optimization. As we had already established functional group tolerance for the system in our previous work, here we focused exclusively on selecting substrates with different steric environments around the alcohols. The average regioisomeric ratio of the resulting lactone products across all seven of these screening substrates was our primary metric for optimization in this work. We first tested the performance of commercially available aminoxyl radicals using trichloroisosteneric acid, TCCA, as our terminal oxidant, sodium bicarbonate as the base, and dichloromethane as a solvent. We used the buried volumes of the aminoxyl catalyst to quantify the accessibility of the active sites by measuring the percentage of space occupied by the catalyst core within a sphere of 2.5 angstrom radius centered around the oxygen atom. As expected, due to the steric shielding of the active site by four adjacent methyl groups, 
Tempo gave a moderate average selectivity of 74% for the less hindered site. In contrast, this directly accessible keto abno was almost completely unbiased for either site. Upon high throughput screening over a library of aminoxyl peptide catalysts, we rapidly identified a dimeric peptide, here denoted as PA, as exceptional for achieving high selectivity for the less hindered site, significantly improving upon selectivity attainable with Tempo. However, none of the catalysts we screened gave any preference for the more hindered site including our optimal peptide for the desymmetrization of mesodial P7. As it turns out, enantial selective catalysis often does not translate well to site selective catalysis. If we view this as a very simplified reaction coordinate diagram model, in enantial selective catalysis, there's an identical barrier to the formation of either product, and you can achieve selectivity by lowering the barrier to one of the pathways. This does not translate well to site selectivity due to the intrinsic bias for one of the sites with an unsymmetrical substrate making it much more challenging to achieve the same level of selectivity. We reasoned that in this case, the methyl group adjacent to the active site of our catalyst was sterically clashing with our substrates, and hypothesized that maybe we could alleviate this bias by designing a new catalyst core which was sterically accessible, similar to keto abno, to overcome substrate control and allow for catalyst control by the peptide. As I take you through the new catalyst cores that we've prepared, I've also included our synthetic routes, since after all, this program is called Synthesis Workshop. I won't talk about all the routes in detail, but you're welcome to pause the video and take a closer look if you're interested in our syntheses. If we swap the methyl group for a smaller fluorine atom, we can actually turn on our desired reactivity with peptide P7, albeit with a small degree of selectivity. Incidentally, this fluorinated catalyst core is also significantly more oxidizing than ASCME, and as such has been featured in other recent work by our group on oxymonium catalyzed amine and ether oxidation to lactam and lactones, respectively. Further swapping out the fluorine for a proton actually gave a similar selectivity across the screening substrates, but upon a solvent screening, we identified chloroform as a superior solvent, which boosted the average selectivity with ASCH to 70% for the more hindered site. To further improve selectivity and to circumvent the lengthy synthesis of ASCH, we next substituted one of the carbon atoms in the azadamantine skeleton with an oxygen atom, and we're excited to see an improved average selectivity of 83% across the monosubstrates. We attribute this improvement to the retraction of the cage rings due to the shorter carbon-oxygen bonds compared to the carbon-carbon bonds. We've prepared this core starting from the reduction of a commercially available ketone to the corresponding alcohol, which was primed in orientation for a key cyclization step with pitta and iodine under blue light radiation. The ester handle for peptide coupling could then be installed by direct dilithiation and trapping with methyl chloroformate. Deprotection of the amine and oxidation with MCPBA could then furnish the aminoxyl radical core in 30% yield over five steps on a gram scale. Finally, we prepared NORASC, in which a carbon was completely deleted from the skeleton in an attempt to push selectivity even further. But this did not provide much improvement, and OASC was used moving forward due to ease of preparation. We also screened a variety of changes to the peptide, but P7 remained the most general structure for this transformation. With optimized catalysts in hand for both the oxidation of the more hindered site and less hindered site, we tested our method on preparative scale. Large and small dye substitution was accommodated with excellent selectivity for both the more and less hindered sites. For substrates bearing a stereocenter, we observed a strong matched mismatched effect, while the matched enantiomer of the two methyl dial gave an 80% selectivity for the more hindered site, the mismatched enantiomer lost all selectivity. Notably, while Tempo is unable to differentiate between a methyl group and a proton, ASCMEPA is able to achieve 91% selectivity for the less hindered site. Benzyl substitution was accommodated with moderate selectivity. However, we observed that adding a branch substituent resulted in a drop in performance. Fused rings were well tolerated, and this method could also be extended to 1,5 dials in excellent selectivity. By lowering the loading of the oxygen, we were even able to stop at a single oxidation in high selectivity, stopping the corresponding lactal products or hydroxyaldehydes for longer chain dials which do not cyclize. To further showcase our method, we next performed site-selective oxidation of some natural product derivatives. We accessed this first dial from polygodial, which we isolated from mountain pepper bush leaves. Although the sterically differentiated substituents were one additional carbon away compared to our model substrates, we were delighted to obtain excellent selectivity for both transformations. For this challenging camphor-derived 1,6 dial, we had initially achieved 70% selectivity for the more hindered site using peptide P7. We further improved the selectivity to 79%, by making slight modifications to the peptide backbone, highlighting the modularity of these catalysts for further substrate-specific improvements when desired. Finally, we performed a two-step lactone transposition, 
allowing for vector adjustment of the lactone carbonyl, which has been shown to exert large influences on key interactions between bioactive compounds and protein binding sites in other contexts. By reduction with lithium aluminum hydride, filtration without further purification, and oxidation with ASC MEPA, we were able to transpose iridomyrmicin to dihydronepetalactone in 98% yield and 92% selectivity. Finally, we performed a few experiments to better understand the origins of selectivity. We found that ASC-MEP7 and OASC-P7 gave identical enantioselectivity for the oxidation of a mesodiol, indicating that the secondary structure of the peptide remains the same regardless of the catalyst core. Replacement of the I plus 2 and I plus 3 residues with glycine still provided some selectivity for the more hindered site, suggesting that the secondary structure of the peptide itself is likely the major factor affecting selectivity rather than the sterics of a specific side chain. We also observed that a water molecule trapped in the crystal structure of ASC-MEP7 formed hydrogen bonds to the I and the I plus 3 residues, and hypothesized that the same hydrogen bonding interaction could exist with a spectrator alcohol of the diol substrates. Taken together, a selectivity model for the oxidation of the more hindered site emerges, in which the less hindered alcohol preferentially binds in the sterically congested peptide pocket, leaving the more hindered site free to be oxidized with the bulky substituent pointing away from the peptide, and the rate acceleration associated with the two-point binding outcompeting direct oxidation of the less hindered site. As for the oxidation of the less hindered site, we don't yet know exactly what interactions are providing high selectivity, but I'll leave you with this competition experiment. One would think that an alternative approach for achieving high selectivity could have been to simply increase the buried volume of the catalyst, right? In reality, highly hindered CHAMPO actually gave very poor selectivity. In this competition experiment, we found that ASCMEPA has a 21-fold greater rate than CHAMPO for the oxidation of the spenzyl substituted diol indicating that increasing steric bulk is not a viable strategy due to a loss in reactivity. Instead, by leveraging non-covalent interactions, we were able to achieve selectivity beyond that which is possible solely using steric hindrance. With that, I would like to conclude by thanking the team, without whom this project would not have been possible. I would also like to thank the whole Songlin lab, especially the Aminoxyl team, for valuable discussions and their enthusiasm for chemistry as well as our funding sources, especially the NSFGRFP, for their financial support. Let's thank Samsung for the talk. The catalyst controls that either reinforces or overrides the intrinsic steric bias is impressive. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe and follow up on the next episode. See you next time.